Okay, I think we're going to get started. We have a few announcements to make. Um, I'd like to give Francis a round of applause. Thank you, Francis. We're going to start off with our fourth quarter Chamber of Excellence Award. Um, I did abstain from voting, so I just want you all to know this. Um, Jason, would you mind coming up? It goes to First United Bank. My name is Jason Hawkins and I'm president of First United Bank, but I need to present this award to Shannon Coots uh, <coughs> because Shannon and her team have been responsible for everything that we've done in this market. So, Shannon, I just want to say I appreciate all that you do. I appreciate the opportunity that First United Bank has to be in Ohio County and serve this market, and I appreciate everything that you and your team do every day. So I'm going to go back to you. Thank you. Our Small Business Saturday, um, we have partnered with OC Tourism and Beaver Down Tourism to make shopping bags available to the retail businesses who participated. We delivered those yesterday, and I'm not sure if Judy, did we get them all out? I still like the couple of pages that were okay. yesterday. Okay. Okay. We do have a few extra bags back here in the back if anybody wants to pick up some. Um, we had several members to put promotional items and coupons in the bag, so that, that's something new this year that we're trying. Um, if you would like a bag, like I said, go ahead and pick one up, however many you want back there. They're on the back table. Um, the voting for the annual award in, ends this Saturday, November the 24th. If you haven't voted for your favorite, you need to go online. It's on Facebook. Go ahead and get your votes in because that's about to end. Um, I will let you know that uh, the four Chamber Excellent Award recipients are Persimmons, Beardam Tourism, Purdue, and then of course First United Bank. And one of those will be uh, the Chamber Member of the Year at the Gala. Uh, see. We will be uh, having a float in the Christmas parade for Shop Ohio, promoting Shop Ohio County. So that's something new this year. Um, anybody that wants to come out, you can help with that. And now I'm going to call on our Vice President, Brian Belcher. He's going to make a few announcements and then introduce our speaker. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Just wanted to remind everyone that our annual Christmas gala is going to be on December the 18th. It will be held here. Um, you should be getting some invitations. Those should be going out uh, next week. So be looking for that in your mailbox. And we're asking that um, you make your RSVP for the dinner reservations for your business uh, as soon as possible so we can have a uh, record of the numbers. Um, also, uh, if you would like to guarantee your business a table together, um, we do have some opportunities for some sponsorships that are still available. Um, this year, <coughs> once again, we're offering our levels of sponsorship uh, that is platinum, gold, and silver for the silver sponsorship, uh, that is $100. For the gold, that's $250. And that includes the table, the sign for your business. It'll seat six reserved seats for your business. Um, and then we'll also have your name on our backdrop when we take our photographs. That's $250. And for a platinum sponsorship, that's $400. Uh, that will have your business as the sponsorship for one of our big ticket items that we'll have for our auction. You'll get a table sign. You'll also have six reserve seats and your name on the backdrop. If you have uh, intended on sponsoring, uh, please, especially at one of these gold or platinum levels, please let Judy know today. She's about to place um, <coughs> for our backdrop. And so um, if you have been meaning to, but you haven't had, had the opportunity or just slipped your mind, please see Judy before you leave today. Uh, and she will get, help you uh, get that taken care of. All right. So now the next thing is we're going to have our, we've had our draws for our January Business and Spotlight. We'll have a break um, in December, but our January Business and Spotlight is New Beginnings. So uh, Judy will be getting with you. We'll have a uh, 
we'll have a little area for you to talk a little bit about some things that are going on. Um, but we appreciate you all being our chamber members. And uh, please see Judy before you leave, and she can get some information to you as well. So um, new beginnings. We'll learn more about you later. And then finally, um, we're going to do our drawing. We've had our drawing for our door prize. And uh, if you are the winner, please see Judy again. She's controlling everything back there, so <laughs> stop in. See Judy. She'll uh, get, get this to you. But the lucky winner is 608797. So close. 608797. All right, Jared. Good job. All right, congratulations. <laughs> We are pleased to have Summer Hines with us today. She is the principal at Southern Elementary. Um, she is going to talk a little bit about some of the exciting things that they have going on and that the students have been really working hard on and that are excited for people to know what they're doing. And uh, she's gonna to talk to us a little bit about that here in just a moment. Summer received her bachelor's and master's degree from Western Kentucky mm -hmm. University. She holds certifications in elementary education instruction, middle grades English instruction, Curriculum Specialist, Principalship, Levels 1 and 2, Director of Pupil Personnel, and Supervisor of Instruction. This is her ninth year as Principal at Southern Elementary and her 19th year with Ohio County Schools. Summer lives in Hartford and she's married to her husband, Will. Together they have four children, Hope, Faith, Cameron, and Sophie. So if you will, please join me in welcoming Summer. Hello, I'm so pleased to be here. Um, I really appreciate the opportunity. I've been looking forward to it. I was asked to speak today on the exciting things that are happening at Southern Elementary. And let me tell you, that could be, that's every day at Southern. Um, Southern is one of six elementary schools in our county. Ohio County has a very strong school system, but Southern is one of them. Um, and we have started the Leader in Me program about five years ago. So I'm going to talk to you just for a few minutes today about that. Let me tell you what's happening at Southern today. Today we are having what's called house competitions. And all of the teachers you'll see um, have their faces painted and some of them have blue hair and orange hair, green hair, because all of our, our school is divided into four houses and each house is assigned a color. And when they get together to compete, it's like madness. It's really, really a fun time. It's one of my favorite things, and you should check that out on Southern's Facebook page. There are videos of the houses doing chants and competing against each other, and it's really, really something to see. Um, so, when they asked me to speak at the chamber today um, about some of the things that are happening at Southern, I know um, it got me to thinking about chambers in general, and I appreciate the work that you all do. When I was in my 20s, which is a long time ago, um, it seems like especially, I was still living um, in Morgantown, and I did a lot of work with that chamber. Not as a small business leader, I was never a business leader, but I was just a young teacher. And the work of the chamber, uh, I enjoyed it. Chambers of commerce are important in communities. And I didn't grow up in this community. Um, I've been here 12 years. This is my home now. Ohio County has been very good to me, and I appreciate that. Uh, we, I'm, I grew up in Morgantown. <laughs> I'm taking a lot of heat off of that. Uh, so uh, don't hold that against me. Um, I wasn't related to anybody there, um, but it was a fantastic place to grow up in the 80s. Um, my parents moved us there when I was three, when they bought the newspaper there. And it really was a great place to grow up. And we owned the newspaper growing up, and my dad was a Baptist pastor, and my mom was in education. And so we were very involved in the community. And in my 20s, like I said, I volunteered a lot with Catfish Festival and those types of committees in Morgantown, just because I enjoyed it. And, you know, the Chamber is a group of like-minded people working together for a goal. And the goal is, of course, to grow the community, but it's not just that. It's to make the community that you have better. And schools are much like that. 
we are a group of educators who work together for a common goal and that goal at the bare minimum should be to produce productive members of society right we want them to be productive members of society we want them all to hold jobs and do something after high school and learn the skills the basic skills they need to do that but that should be the absolute bare minimum I mean being a productive member of society that's great but like that's a given don't you think I mean everybody should do that and we want more than that and I want more than that and and that's where the leadership program at Southern comes into play so like Brian said this is my ninth year as principal at Southern so about not nine years ago because that first year I was like what am I doing um, and Lord Beth Lunsford is one of the ones that hired me she's <laughs> She is probably she was probably thinking, thinking the same thing that first year. Um, she was on the side based council who hired me, but I'd say probably the second year. So let's say eight years ago. Eight years ago, I started thinking about schools of excellence in other areas, and you know I started visiting schools in Bowling Green, Owensboro, Henderson, Louisville, Nashville, Lexington, and I wanted what they had and I wanted it here because if I was going to be a principal here and Will and I were going to live here I wanted our youngest daughter who was the only one at the time who still hadn't gone through elementary school I wanted her to have the best opportunity and I didn't want to have to drive her to Davis County or Warren County to get it because she deserves everything they were getting there and the things that I was seeing and every kid does. Every kid in Cromwell does. Every kid in Ohio County and Butler County too, just so you know. Um, but, so I started visiting all these schools and I was looking for commonalities. What, what do I see? What am I seeing that's great? And then, the next year, the staff and I started talking about, and site based Council, started talking about, okay, we're looking at, you know, we're seeing great things in other schools but what does the community need from us so seven years ago I sent out a survey and some of you may remember this if you've been in that you know your business long enough and you are around the southern elementary area we sent a survey and there were multiple questions and I was asking what do you need from us what do you as a business owner or business leader think that at the elementary level we need to be taken care of and man, those responses, <laughs> they were so interesting. And they were real. And you guys said things like, well, first of all, we need to be able to count change. And I was like, really? Because that's a problem? But it is, apparently. You know, we need to be able to write in cursive. Where did cursive go? And we do teach cursive, by the way. Um, and then there were other things that were bigger than that. You know, we need them to be able to communicate and not just stay on their devices, but have real conversations. We need adults in the workplace who can be responsible and be proactive and show up. And we need kids who will come together and be leaders in the community. Okay, all right, so let's see what we can do. So when you take all those visits I went on and then I started sending the staff on those visits and the results from that survey, it all just kind of blended together. And everything I was seeing was leading me to this program called The Leader in Me. And The Leader in Me is in every school in Warren County and Bowling Green. Their Chamber of Commerce paid, I, I mean, hundreds of thousands of dollars to put that program into all those schools. And they're in most of the schools in Owensboro and Davis County. So all these schools of excellence I was seeing had this. I was like, what is this? Well, it's a program that's worked really well for us. I don't think it's for everybody, and I'm not saying all of our elementary schools should do it. We have great <coughs> elementary schools, but it was just what we needed at the time, and it's what worked for us. And here's where it comes from. So Stephen Covey developed the seven habits of highly effective people, and some of you may remember that. In the 80s and 90s, 
The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People was, was a really popular thing in corporations and industry. I mean, uh, my mom was an administrator in education, and she was a Covey trainer. And she trained the principals and the other people at Central Office in Butler County at that time in the eight, late 80s, early 90s, um, on the Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And so it's been around for a long time, but now it's been adapted for schools. And that's what, we, that's what I saw. So we sent the staff out. We sent lots of, about six or seven parents out and said, okay, I, and I didn't tell them anything. I said, okay, I want you to go to these schools and tell me what you see, come back. And they're like, oh my gosh, Summer, we've got to have it. We've got to have this, this is incredible. And um, so when they came back and said that, and all the staff did too, then I thought, okay, if, I have if there's 100% buy-in, we'll go for it. Because it's a lot of work, and it's a financial commitment. And I don't know if you all have been told, but schools don't have any money. And <laughs> I, um, so, you know, when they all got back, and after that next year, so this was about six years ago, they were like, we're in. Whatever work it takes, we're in. So, we all wanted what we saw there. Now, five years later, now, if you come and visit Southern Elementary School, and some of you have, I recognize some of your faces, you've been invited to our leadership days and to our monthly leadership luncheons, and thank you for coming. Our kids need an audience, and they need to be able to practice those leadership skills, and you guys coming gives them that chance. So thank you if you've been able to sponsor or participate. And also, just a little side note, thank you if you've sponsored our 5K. Uh, we appreciate that very much. <laughs> that sponsors all of our 16 clubs. Um, but anyway, the community at, at large has been very good to us. But five years later now, now that we've been doing this program for five years, I don't have to think about what I see when I go to other schools. Now they come to us. Especially now, we just got named a lighthouse school which means that other schools who want to learn about leadership programs, they come to Southern. And that is an incredible thing. And we had a huge celebration in the fall because, oh my goodness, in Ohio County, in Ohio County, we have a lighthouse school. You know, there are four of those in Davis County and I think six in Warren County. But wow, in Cromwell, you know, it's a big thing. And so we were really excited. And now if you come and visit Southern, here's what you'll see. You'll see what we saw there. You'll see students all over the building, before class and after class, doing one of 50 school-wide jobs that they applied for. Whether it's sanitizing the doorknobs, they like doing that. I don't know why they do. Whatever. I love it that they like it. We buy more Lysol wipes than you've ever seen. They just use them up. You'll see things like that. You'll see students who introduce themselves to you and look at you when they speak and shake your hand. You'll see students who are taught to complete job applications from preschool all the way to sixth grade. Even if someone else is scribing for them, they're completing a job application on why they want to be the pledge director for that nine weeks on Monday. They're completing job applications because if they get selected to phase two, then they have to go through an interview process. And they have to be interviewed on why they think that they're qualified to be a member of the Lighthouse team. And you know what? Not everybody gets on it. And that's okay. That's real life. Because they're going to be a leader in something else. You'll see students who set goals and write lead measures in kindergarten on how to reach those goals, both in academics and personally. And then they track that data in a leadership notebook. And we have scoreboards posted throughout the school. I really want you to see it. I wish we were having this at Southern today. You'll see students leading our morning assembly every day. At least 10 students a day, different students, depending on that day of the week. And Amanda Fuller can vouch for that because she drives her son to Southern even though she doesn't live in that district. Well, she does now. Thank you, Amanda. And in that in-town meeting, those students are telling you the day, weather for the day, the sports of the day, you know, day. Like they were announcing this morning, the NFL scores from last night. I didn't catch them all, but that's what they were talking about. They're going to tell you the quote of the day and um, what we're having for lunch. And somebody's going to lead the pledge and do a patriotic song. And I'm not out there. You know, they're doing that. And then you have another group of students who have organized that 
and gotten the notes off of Google that morning that the teachers posted on Google Docs and they're printing that off. You'll see students in the classroom standing to answer questions because that's what we require. When the teacher asks a question, if you have an answer, then you stand to, re you stand to respond. And if someone else has a comment on your response, which we encourage, then they, that wasn't mine, <laughs> then they stand to respond to that. And it's just been a wonderful thing. And it's been five years in now, so it's really embedded into our curriculum. And it's something that it's not in addition to the academics. It's in it with it. And we have um, students who can do things that I never imagined five years ago. I know many of you are fantastic business leaders and you're good at your jobs, but you wouldn't necessarily be comfortable speaking in front of 300 people. And most of our students do it. And even if they're not comfortable now speaking in front of 300 people, they probably will be by the time they get to sixth grade. Or maybe they're a quiet leader, and that's okay too. That's okay too, just like Brittany's son, Jackson, who goes there, and he doesn't want to speak in front of people, but he's a musician. And so when we had our last leadership day, instead of being the one who was a tour guide or explaining one of the scoreboards on the wall, Jackson sat on a bale of hay, covered with quilt, of course, um, sat on a bale of hay and played his guitar while people came in. You know, and that's how he shows his leadership skills. So quiet leaders are okay, okay too. But coaches came from Franklin Covey, Covey Foundation and worked with our teachers and our staff and helped us learn how to implement those seven habits into study skills, work ethic, and goal setting. And um, I just, I appreciate the leaders that it's created. And I really think that you guys as a community will see the benefit of that. And I'm proud of them. I'm proud of our students. I'm proud that when scores fluctuate, even this year, you know, Southern's used to a very, um, we're used to, uh, we have a history of success at Southern, thankfully. And, um, you know, all but two of those years, not that anybody's counting, all but two of the years that I've been there, we've had really strong test scores. And this year when, we, when scores came out and they were just a little bit lower than we had anticipated, we were so thankful. Our, our staff was so thankful that we had the group of students we do because we know whatever we throw at them to improve, they're going to take it. They're going to take it in stride and they have the work ethic to get through it. So I think that this program, even though it's not for everybody, it's worked for us. And I think that Ohio County has a strong school system that you all can be proud of. And I want our youngest child, who's when I started being principal, she was two years old. And I kept her in mind. You know, what would I want for her? What do you want for your kids? You want the best. If Sophie wants to go to Owensboro Community College, that's fine with me. But if she wants to go to Harvard, she's going to be ready. I want her to be able to go into an interview setting anywhere she wants to go and just nail it. And I really think that that's what we're building at Southern. And I do really appreciate the support that you all have given us. Um, you know, schools, schools fluctuate. They fluctuate with students and teachers, and, and it's an ebb and flow. It really is. But when we have the kind of culture that we have at Southern, you know, things are going to be okay, regardless of the changes at KDE or the changes with our commissioner. So, you know, I just, I, again, I want to thank you for your support. Uh, if you ever get the chance to come out to Southern, we want you to come. We'd love to have you. Or if you've just been dying to support a school in some way, um, you want to send a cake to Fall Festival sometime. We've already had ours this year, but you will have a chance next year. We can hook you up if you feel like you need to do something in the community. But um, we do appreciate um, all you've done for us. Um, I was told that there might be questions. If you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. Anybody have any questions? Okay, if not, um, I know that Francis's food was fantastic, and we actually have house competitions this afternoon. That's why everybody at Southern is dressed and their fa faces are painted. So I'm gonna um, cut this off. But again, thank you all for inviting me. Thank you for having me. I'm excited about what's happening at Southern. We do have a pretty fantastic staff. 
Um, and again, I just want to thank you for your support. Thank you, Summer. Um, can we go back to sixth grade and learn how to speak to 300 people? <laughs> anyway, I want to thank everybody for coming out today. Um, don't forget about the gala and uh, going online and voting for your favorites. And everybody have a happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>